Welcome to the Strong Women Program. Today, we're gonna do the Strong Women Program, talk about all the evidence and the support around this program. I have a family of participants that's gonna participate with us today, so let's get started. My name is Angie Flickinger, and the Family Living Educator for UW Extension in Rock County. So, if all of you guys could stand up, and we are gonna start marching in place to get warmed up. So the first thing about this program, it's an evidence-based strength training program for older adults. It benefits five-year-olds, seven-year-olds, 10-year-olds, and we've also had 102-year-olds in our classes. So it benefits anyone. Um, we're gonna meet you where you're at, and hopefully at the end of this program, we're gonna be a little bit stronger than before we came in today. The Strong Woman program is um, it was established at Tufts University um, as part of a research project that went on. And the mission kind of of the national and international program of Strong Women is to increase the safe and effective use of weights in women and men abroad. So this program is in Canada, it's in Australia, it's in the United States, and it's in Mexico. So we expect that this class we're gonna do today is gonna look the exact same as what people are doing in Australia and Florida and California. So. Welcome to the program, we're gonna get started now. So first of all, we're gonna stand behind our chairs, or stand in front of our chairs, sorry. The first exercise we're gonna do is a wide leg squat. So we're gonna strengthen our quadriceps. Um, we wanna do that so we can get up and down, out of the stairs, out of the chairs, off the toilet. Um, so the, what we're gonna do is do really slow count. Um, we're gonna stick our behinds out. The, what it's gonna look like is we're gonna have our arms here. If you feel like this is gonna to be too easy, grab some um, hand weights and you can add those two too. And we're gonna go down, two, three, four. Skim your booty right on the chair and then push up with your heels. Up, two, three, four. Down for two, we're gonna do two sets of 10 of all of these exercises. Hold it, hover right over that chair, push up with your heels. Up, two, three, four. Down for three. Two, three, four, hold it. Up, two, three, four. Great, looking good, down for four. Two, three, four, up, two, three, four. Down for five, two, three, four. Push up with those heels, up, two, three, four. Keep going, down for six. Two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Make sure your knees aren't coming over your toes. You wanna to really push your behinds back into that chair like you're squatting in the woods. Up, two, three, four. What are we on? Seven. Good, seven. <laughs> Up, two, three, four. Big breaths, don't try to hold your breath. Down for eight. Two, three, four. Up, two, three, four, down for nine, two, three, four, up, two, three, four, last one, down for 10, two, three, four, hold it, up, nice and slow. Good, so did you feel that in your quadriceps? This is good. If we feel a little bit of burning, this is good. This is making our legs and muscles get better. We know that we wanna kind of max our muscles out each time, so if you are able to do about 15 more of those, then you need to grab some hand weights and make the effort a little bit harder if you wanna get the best bang for your buck. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is do another set of them, okay? So, let's get ready. We're gonna go down, two, three, four, hold it. Up, two, three, four. Down for two. Legs should be about shoulder width apart. Push up with your heels. Check your knees when you're going down. Make sure they're not coming over your toes. And then push up with those heels. Down for four, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Down for five, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Down for six, good. Two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Down for seven, three more. 
You should start feeling it now. <laughs> Up, two, three, four. Down for eight, two, three, four. Hold it. Up, two, three, four. Down for nine, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Last one, ten, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Great. All right, so you should feel that right in your thighs. Okay, so the next one we're going to do is a shoulder press. So you can grab your lighter weights. You should have, you know, two sets of weights underneath your um, chairs. So today we're going to strengthen all of our muscles. So we're going to, you know, so we're going to do our legs, our arms, our abs, our back. We're kind of going to cover all of them. So for this one, I should see your wrists. You can do this one not without weights if, you do, if you'd like to. If you have a shoulder problem, make sure that you have the same amount of weights in each hand. Okay, big breath. Make sure your legs are loose. And we're going up. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Good, up for two. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for three, two, three, four. Wrists are in neutral position. Up for four, two, three, four. Down, nice and slow. Up for five, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for six, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four, up for seven, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, nine, <laughs> down, two, three, four, up for ten, two, three, Four, down, two, three, four. Good, you can put your, you can keep them in your hands and rest. So for this exercise, you want to strengthen your shoulders so you can reach for things, grab things out of the kitchen counter. You know, anything that you're do doing above your head, you really want to strengthen those shoulders. It also helps with your posture too. So there's lots of reasons that we would do physical activity. We all know we should walk, we should swim and bike and, you know, do cardiovascular stuff. What we don't know or that we haven't figured out as Americans yet is only about 7% of women strength train on a regular basis. And um, the recommendation is that 100% of us should be strength training. Men, there's a slightly higher number, but still not you know, meeting that 100%. So we know there's this gap between what is going on and what we know we should do. So this kind of fulfills that need for strength training, especially post-menopause, which we'll talk about a little bit later. All right, second set. If that was too easy and you weren't feeling it, when it was kind of difficult at 9 and 10, then definitely grab some heavier weights. Otherwise, we will begin. Up, two, three, four, down, nice and slow, two, three, four. Up for two, down, two, three, four. Up for three, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four, down, Nice and slow. Great. Up for five, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for six, two, three, four. Your shoulders should be getting a little bit tired now. By the time we get to nine and ten, you should feel the burn and barely able to push it up. That way we know we kind of maxed out that muscle to maximum capacity and strength building. Eight, two, Three, four, down, two, three, four, nine, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, last one, up for ten, two, three, four, down nice and slow. Good. 
You can put those hand weights be under your chair and grab heavier ones. So we're going to do a bicep curl. So your biceps are a little bit stronger than your shoulders. So we're going to do that one next. All right, again, if you feel like you would like to sit instead of stand, you can do that. Otherwise, you're standing in front of your chair. Legs are nice and loose, not locked out knees. Um, legs are shoulder width apart. And this one, we're going to do bicep curl. So we're going to strengthen our upper arm and we're going to curl up. So we're going to go up, two, three, four. Keep your elbows tucked nicely in, down, two, three, Four, curl back into neutral position, back up for two, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, up for three, two, three, four, good, looking good, down, two, three, four, up again, two, nice and slow. On your way back down, make sure it's nice and controlled, so you're keeping your bicep nice and tight all the way down, keeping that pressure. All right, up four, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Good, up for six, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, up for seven, two, three, four. Keep those wrists in neutral position down nice and slow. You should be able to keep a piece of paper between your armpit and the side of your body. Down nice and slow. Two, three, four. Nine, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Last one, up for ten. Two, three, four. Down nice and slow. Down, two, three, four. Good, so we're gonna do another set of those. There's a lot of reasons you would wanna strengthen your arms. That's for lifting, pulling, pushing, all kinds of things, carrying things. This is a group of women, so we, the Strong Women program, is a, it's a statewide program, so it was brought to the, um, Wisconsin about seven years ago. We have over 500 trained leaders around the state. We have about 200 active leaders that are teaching the program all around the state. I'll show you later a little bit of a map about um, where all those classes are. Um, here are some of the leaders that have been trained. All right, second set. Legs in neutral positions. And let's start. Up, two, three, four. Down nice and slow. Loose grip on your weights. Make sure you're not holding them too much with your grip. And we're going to go down. Two, three, four. Up for three. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for four. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Good. Up for five. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for six, two, three, four. Great, down nice and slow. And up for seven, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four, nine, two, three, four, ten. Two, three, four. Perfect. You can put those weights underneath your chair and grab your lighter weights. The next one we're going to do is a wrist curl. So you can sit, sit, have a seat in your chairs. We're going to be leaning forward. Forearms are going to be on our legs. Wrists are going to be just drooped right over your kneecaps. Um, the motion we're going to do is just up and down. Dep just do your full range of motion. So depending on your range of motion, that's how... That's how much you're going to extend your wrist. We want to keep our knuckles up. We want to go nice and slow. And like I said, grab your lighter weights for this one. All right. Up, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for two, two, three, four. 
down, two, three, four. So there's lots of reasons that you would want to strengthen your wrist, especially if you're at a desk and you're doing a lot of computer work. You want to make sure you keep those bones and those muscles strong around the wrist. Also, we know that when we fall, we usually fall and use our wrist or our hands to protect ourselves from the ground. And so that can be an easy fracture. So we want to make sure that we keep those muscles and bones strong. We are on Six. two, three, four, down, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four. Keep your forearms down, just moving your wrists up for eight. Two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Good, up for eight, two, three, four. You should start to feel a little bit of fatigue in your wrist. Nine and 10 should be difficult, like I said. If nine and 10 aren't feeling very difficult, then we're ready for heavier weights. And that's the whole purpose of this program is to start where you're at and then to get stronger. Down, two, three, four. Good. So this program is supposed to be twice a week or three times a week. We know we should strength train, not um, sequential days in a row. So Monday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Thursday. But the recommendation is that we're strength training as women and men of all ages at least twice a week. The other thing I'd like to note is that a lot of times we used to think that um, aging was the reason for all these things that happen to our bodies. We know that a lot of times it's inactivity associated with aging <laughs> that's the responsible for some of these um, detrimental things that we feel like are happening to our muscles. So we know that as we get older, um, our fat mass, our fat mass kind of does go up, and that is because of aging, our glucose intolerance. Um, sleep problems, cognitive decline, cholesterol levels, those kind of go up. Um, but we know when we're not active that our muscles and our aerobic capacity and our bone density and our balance is actually because of our inactivity and not necessarily because of our aging. Okay, second set. Same thing, wrists over your kneecaps, and let's do 10 of them. Here we go. Up, two, three, four, down, two, Three, four. Good, you should feel it right in your wrists. If you have carpal tunnel or have any wrist issues where it's causing sharp shooting pain, stop the exercise. You can also do it if you have um, some wrist problems, you can do it from the opposite direction and do it this way. Up, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for five, two, three four, down, nice and slow, keep it controlled, keep that pressure on your wrist as you're going down, six, we're going down nice and slow, down, two, three, four, good, you should start feeling it in that wrist, up for seven, down, two, three, four, up for eight, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, up for nine, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Last one, great job, guys. Up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Good, so you should feel that in your wrist, yes? This is good. Okay, the next one we're gonna do is a bent forward fly. So we're still gonna be seated. Um, I would grab your lightest, lightest weights, or actually no weights at all if you haven't done this one before. We're going to be strengthening our upper shoulders and our back muscles. And I, this one is kind of difficult to do because we want to use our arms so much. So I'm going to have you, if you have any lower back issues, I'm going to have you sit straight up in your chair and do the exercise from the seated position. If you have your lower back's feeling fine, I'm going to have you lean down about at a 60 to 70 degree angle, find a spot on the floor to look at, and then you'll be doing the exercise from this angle. Okay? So grab the weights that you would like to use. Lean forward in your chair, otherwise you're straight up. I want everyone to hug something out in front of them, big wide arms. I want you to put your shoulders up in your ears and relax them. Okay, leave them there. We don't want them up in our ears. That means we're all stressed out. Okay, and then what we're going to do is just pull our shoulder blades together. So don't worry about your weights and your hands. We're just pulling our shoulder blades together. Try not to come up in your chair, so you want to keep at that angle and pull your shoulder blades together. 
Arms don't have to go past perpendicular with your body. They should go right about there. Not like this, like this, okay? Okay, now, this one's a little bit more difficult, so if you have heavier weights, grab some lighter weights. We're gonna do 10 of them. Relax shoulders, arms out in neutral position, about a foot and a half in front of you, and we're gonna pull those shoulder blades together for one, two, three, four. Squeeze those shoulder blades together like you're trying to squeeze a tennis ball between them. Forward, two, three, four. Great, back for two, two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. I want loose grips on your weights. Back, two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. Back for four, two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. Good, keep going. Back for five, two, three, four. You should feel it right here. Forward, two, three, four. Back for six. So you're pulling those shoulder blades together. Forward, two, three, four. What are we on? Seven. Seven. <laughs> two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. Back for eight. Two, three, four. Perfect. Forward, two, three, four. Back for nine. Two, three, four. Forward, two, three, Four, last one, back for 10. Two, squeeze those shoulder blades together, hold it there. Forward, two, three, four, great. <laughs> so you should feel that in your upper back. So that's an upper back muscle. So we wanna strengthen all those muscles right here to help with posture, help you standing up, help your movement, all your flexibility in your upper body. So there's lots and lots of reasons that we strength train. So they know all the benefits of exercise, but they also have found strength, people that just strength train and don't do anything else also have decreased risk of depression, have better sleep, um, which everyone would like to have improved sleep, especially post perimenopausal. Um, helps with self-confidence, self-esteem. Um, it increases your glucose panel, your blood cholesterol. It kind of it, it packs everything just as much as our, our um, cardiovascular exercise does. So strength training, really critical part to that piece too. Okay, second set. Lean in your chair, 60 degree angle. Hands out wide. Everyone relax those shoulders. Good, and then shoulder blades together for one, two, three, four, hold it. Loose grip on your weights, in, two, three, four. Keep your core tight, back. Two, three, four. Elbows should be angling down in a neutral position. Back for three, two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. Think about those shoulder blades. Back, squeeze them together. Try to squeeze a pencil between them. Forward, two, three, four. Back again, four. I have no idea. Let's try that again. <laughs> Back six. for six. <laughs> two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. Relax your shoulders, guys. Back for seven, two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. Loose grip on your weights. Back for eight, two, three, four. Forward, two, three, four. Back for nine, two, three, four, forward, two, three, four, back for 10. Last one, squeeze those shoulder blades together. You should really feel it now. Forward, two, three, four. Good, great, great, great. Shake out those shoulders. The next one we're gonna do is standing behind our chair. We're gonna do a, a toe and calf raise. So for this one, if you feel like your balance is pretty good, you can grab some um, hand weights to go with. Otherwise, you can stand behind your chair and we're gonna do a calf and toe raise. All right, so this one, you can have weights in your hands if you'd like. We're gonna be going up and down, full range of motion. 
Otherwise, you can drop your weights and just do um, right behind your chair. So depending on your balance, if you're feeling your balance is good, then I just want to have you hover your hands and keep it like this. Um, but if you feel like your balance is a little bit not as balanced, then I want your finger or your hands on the chair for safety. Okay, so we're going up, two, three, four. You should be on your tiptoes. Hold it up there. And then we're going to go down nice and slow. Try not to rest those heels on the ground, and then we're going to go back up for two. Two, three, four. Hold it up there. Down, two, three, four. Good. Up for three, two, three, four. So you should feel your ankles kind of shaking around. Those are all your stabilizer muscles waking up, trying to make sure that you stand straight up. That's a good thing. We're waking them up. Down, two, three, four. Try not to rest that heel. Back up. Down, two, three, four. Up for six. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. You should start feeling it in your calf muscle. Up, down, two, three, four. Up for eight. Two, three, four. Hold it up there. Down, two, three, four. Depending on your flexibility, you may be able to get four inches off of the ground. Some people might only be able to get one inch off of the ground. That's okay. Back up for ten. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Good. So I'm going to have you lift your toes up. So lift your toes up to stretch out that calf muscle that we just um, built up. It's going to stretch out your shins a little bit. We want to strengthen our lower legs so we can walk longer, walk more distances. We're going to hold that for a couple seconds. We have a picture of some of our participants in our classes on the screen. This is one of the um, hundreds of classes that are going around statewide. All right, good. So rest your leg. So um, this is a picture of sarcopenia. So if you know what sarcopenia is, this is a cross-section of a thigh. So if you took somebody's thigh and you split it in half and then looked at it, you can see the young active person on the right has 80% muscle and the light gray part is um, fat. And on the other side, it's the same size thigh, so they might both wear a size 12. Um, but this one, You'd probably want the one on the right, right? Because this one is about 50% fat and about 50% muscle. So even though it can be the same size, the, competition, the composition of your muscle is really important for your health. All right, second set of ankles and calves. So grab a weight if that was pretty easy for you. Grab some weights. Get your balance. Nice and sturdy legs. And we're going up. Two, three, four. Down nice and slow. Nice and slow and controlled. That's where the strength is built. Up, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for three, two, three, four. Full range of motion. Great job. Down, two, three, four. Up for four, two, three, four. Nice job. Down, two, three, four. Up for six, two. Three, four, down, two, three, four, up for seven, two, three, four, hold it up there, down, two, three, four, up for eight, down nice and slow, like I said, you should feel those stabilizer muscles, up for nine, two, three, four, down, two, three, Four, last one, great. Up, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Good. Again, pull your toes straight up. Should feel that stretch in your calf muscle. We're going to hold that for about 15 seconds. The next exercises we're going to do are on the floor. So if you're able bodied, you can get on the floor on your mat. Um, if not, you can stand or sit behi behind your chair. Great, so if we can transition to the floor.
The exercise we're going to do is our ab muscles, so our abdominal muscles. So we're going to actually be on our backs to start with. If you are um, standing or sitting, you're going to be in your chairs. Sit in the chair, yeah, for abs. Um, it's fine. It, you'll be on the floor. It's fine. Okay, so the exercise we're going to do is just a, a very simple pelvic tilt. So um, we're going to have our backs flat up against the ground. We're going to have our knees bent, feet flat on the floor. And so we're going to tilt our pelvises inward. So in that motion that we're going to tilt our pelvis, it's almost like you're bringing, drawing your belly button to the spine or to the floor. So you're pushing that lower back straight up against the floor. One other way you can do it to cue it is to put your hands on your thighs and kind of push. So push your hands on your thighs and automatically you'll engage that lower ab muscles. Okay? From the chair, we're going to sit in the chair. We're going to do the same thing. So you can sit back in the chair, tilt your pelvis in, and then I want you to bring up one leg. And we'll do that for six seconds and then switch legs. Okay? So for you all on the floor, I will be walking around. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. Tilt that pelvis in. Hold those abs tight. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Rest. Good. Big breath in. Try not to use your legs and tilt that pelvis in, belly button to your spine. Hold it tight for five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Big breath in. Exhale. Push on those thighs. If you can't feel your, your body engaging, push on those thighs. That will automatically engage that lower pelvic muscles. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Rest. Good. Big breath in. Tilt that pelvis in. Let's do it again. Great. Rest. Big breath in. Push on those thighs. Tilt that pelvis. Relax. Big breath. Exhale like you're exhaling out of a straw. Let all the air out. Tilt that pelvis in. Belly buttons to the floor. Also make sure you're doing a Kegel so you're you know, kind of engaging those muscles like you're going to pee yourself, but you want to cut off your pee stream. We don't want any pee on the floor right now, so hold it tight. Relax. Big breath in. And again, make sure you're doing a Kegel. Hold it tight. Belly button's tight to the floor. Relax. Last one. Big breath in. Belly button's to the spine. Hold it tight. Let's hold it for five. Four, three, two, one, relax. Do you feel that in your lower abs? Mm -hmm. So you should feel that in your lower ab muscles. We can advance this one to bringing up our upper body, um, but this is a very basic one. We want to strengthen all those lower pelvic floor muscles to strengthen up um, our urinary track issues, also to strengthen your lower abs, with, which helps with posture and also helps with all those core exercises. Okay, so on the screen is a picture of a young man that has, um, he's actually a marathon runner, so his cardiovascular, his respiratory system is probably very, very healthy, um, but he doesn't strength train, so he hasn't kept up with that muscle um, building and mass. And, you know, after we hit a certain age or after menopause, they've shown that we have to be very intentional about building our muscles. So they will go away if we don't use them. So this guy... Marathon runner, but because he doesn't have, you know, upper body strength, is probably going to miss out on some of those daily function activities because of that unintentionality of strength training. All right, second, second set. Again, belly buttons to your spine. Tilt your pelvis in. The lower back is pushed up against the floor. Big breath. Let's start it. And go. Push up against your legs. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. One, relax. Big breath in. Again, tilt that pelvis and hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Big breath. Tilt that pelvis in. Hold it tight. Make sure you're doing a Kegel. Hold it for five, four, three. Hold it tight. One, relax. Big breath in. 
Tilt that pelvis in. Everything's all tight. Hold it. Five, four, three. Almost if you had a weight on your belly, you're trying to keep that weight up. Relax. Big breath in. Tilt that pelvis in. This is five. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Big breath. Blow it out. Belly buttons to your spine. Make sure that you're holding all those lower pelvic muscles together. Hold it tight. Three, two, one. Relax. Again for six. Belly buttons to your spine. Hold it tight. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Good. Three to go. Big breath in. Exhale. Hold it for seven. Try not to use your legs. You're just using those ab muscles. Relax. Big breath in. Belly buttons to your spine. Pushing that smaller back right up against the floor. Hold it through. Three, two, one. Relax. Again for nine. Tilt that pelvis in. Hold it tight for five, four, three, two, one. Relax. One more. Big breath and tight as you can. Tilt that pelvis in. Hold it tight. Hold it tight. Five, four, three, two, and one. Relax. Great. So we just worked our ab muscles. Now we're going to transfer to using our back muscles. So what we're going to do is roll over on our mats. So this one, what we're going to do is we're going to have opposite arm. If you're standing up, you're going to be behind your chair, doing opposite arm and leg and engaging that lower back. So we want to do opposing muscles when we're strength training. So if you're on the ground, you're going to have one arm forward, one arm back, and you're going to have your spine nice and neutral position. Your goal is to lift your chest off the ground. So your goal isn't to fling your arm and leg together. Your goal is to lift that chest off the ground so you're creating some space. And you do that by using your lower back. Okay, so we're going to go up and we're going to hold it for six to eight seconds. Okay, so one arm forward, one arm back, noses towards the ground, and we are going up. Two, three, your opposite arm and leg will come up slightly. Hold it. Two, one, relax. Great, take a deep breath. And again, use that lower back to bring your shoulders. Both shoulders should be coming off the ground. Bring them off the ground. Noses should be towards the ground. Hold it and down. Good, you should feel it in your lower back. Again, up for three. Let's hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Great, relax. Again for Relax. And for five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Up for six. Hold it for five, four. Think about that lower back, strengthening those muscles. Relax. Up for seven. Five, four, three, two, one. Relax, good, keep breathing, keep breathing. Up for eight, five, four, three, two, one. Relax, up for nine, five, four, three, two, one. Relax, if you're standing up, make sure you're nice and erect. Up for 10, hold it for five. Make sure your noses are pointed to the ground, spine in neutral position, and relax. Great. Take a deep breath. Stretch out your back. So you should be feeling it in your lower back. On the screen, we have a picture of John Turner at age 67. And he um, strength trains on a regular basis. And you can see you can maintain your muscle mass if you're intentional about it. This is him when he is 79 years old. Still able to maintain that muscle mass because of being intentional about it. So um, women's muscles typically don't, you know, 
look like this because we don't have enough testosterone in our system to do that, but that's what it typically looks like. This is Helen. She's deadlifting a lot of weight. Um, and we don't typically see people that are aging, deadlifting, or in the gym using handbells and dumbbells and weight machines, um, but the face of aging is definitely changing. All right, second set of those back muscles. So we're gonna do opposite arm. So if you're doing your right arm, let's do your left arm. And body's in a straight line, spine is nice and neutral. We are going up. Two, three, four, five, six. Relax. So try to get the chest off the ground as high as you can. Up for two. Two, three, four, five. Up for three. Three, four, five. Relax. Up for four. Hold it up there for five, four, three, two, one. Relax. Up for six. Hold it for five. Four, three, two, one, relax. Up for seven. You should feel it right in your lower back. Up and down. Up for eight. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one, relax. Up for nine, five, four, keep breathing. Three, two, one, relax. Last one, up for 10. Hold it for five, four, three, two, and one. Good, great. So stretch out that back. So we did our abs and our back. Now we're gonna focus on our hips. So we're gonna strap on your ankle weights. If you have some ankle weights, strap, strap on your ankle weights. You're gonna be laying on your side with the ankle weight on the top side of your leg. <laughs> if you're gonna be in your chair or behind your chair, that is fabulous. We're gonna just be doing a motion outward. Okay, so bodies are in a straight line. Hips are stacked up together. Knees are together. Lower leg is bent out, feet are flat, and when everyone gets in position, we can start using our hip muscles. So body's in a straight line, bend this leg back, bend it. Knees are together, hips are together. Try to straighten out your body, perfect. You can be in neutral position, so you're, whatever feels best for your spine, so you can be up on your elbows, otherwise you can have your head laying right on your arm. So I'm gonna have you straighten out your legs, I'm gonna put this leg back. Yep, great. Okay, so the motion that we're gonna do is going up with our legs about uh, eight or nine inches off the ground, maybe 10 or 12 inches off the ground. We're using our hip muscles and then going back slowly down. So we don't wanna go too far up in there. Nice and controlled movement in your hip. And we're gonna strengthen that hip muscle, okay? So knees together, feet are flat, and we are going up two, Three, four, hold it up there. Down, two, three, four. Try not to rest that foot on the ground. Hover it over the carpet. Up for two, two, three, four. Hold it. Down, two, three, four. If you're standing up, nice and straight. Up for three. Hold it up there. Down, two, three, four. Up for four, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Up for five, two, three, four. Feet are flat, down, two, three, four. You're almost leading with your heel. So kind of twist your heel up like you're leading up with it. Great, up, down, two, three, four. Up four. Two, three, four, down, two, three, 
four. Good. You should feel it in your hip. Up for eight, two, three, four. Down, nice and slow. Up for nine, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Last one. Up for ten, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Good. So you should feel it. You can pull your leg up, stretch out that hip. You should feel it right in your hip bone. So we want to strengthen those muscles in your hip and your, around your hip bone to strengthen that bone density because if we fall and break our hip, bad news for you. Um, so we really want to strengthen those muscles up. Okay, we're actually going to do that same side and do another set. So the stat for bone density right now in America is that it affects, osteoporosis affects women 80% more than it affects men. And so a lot of this um, strength training is targeted towards women, but we know that it's just as beneficial for men. So there's about 44 million Americans, uh, men and women, who have low bone density or osteoporosis. And that's because we're living longer. So if we're living longer, we have lower um, bone density because every year after menopause, you lose about 2% of your bone density. So if there's a big gap between when you go and when you hit menopause, then there's a lot of years to lose bone density. So the good news is, if you're intentional about it, that you can maintain your bone density where it's at or even improve it. OK, so legs straight, feet flat, and we're going up. Two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Up for two, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Nice and controlled, going up and down, up for three, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Up for four. Hold it up there. Keep breathing. Down, two, three, four. Great. Up for five, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for six, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for seven, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Four, up for eight, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Great, feet are flat. When it gets hard, we want to point those toes. Down, two, three, four, ten. Up, hold it up there, hold it up there. Down, nice and slow. Down, two, three, four. Good, you can pull that leg forward. Feel that burn in that hip, that's good. That means your muscles are gonna be bigger and better. <laughs> All right, we're gonna flip to our other side and do the other side. So the picture up on the slide is a picture of a healthy bone. So this is microscopically what really healthy bones look like. Um, it's a 43-year-old with a healthy bone. And I'm going to show you the next picture. This is what an osteoporotic bone looks like. So you can see that the bones microscopically are thinning down um, and they start to break. And thus, you know, if you ever had an aging parent or grandparent get shorter as they age, um, the process is because those bones are crushing and their spinal cord is um, crushing a little bit. We used to think this was pretty normal, that that's what grandma looked like as you got older, but we know now that it's a preventable disease of osteoporosis. So this is a preventable thing. And that swaying of the back and the hump in the neck is that's those bones crushing, and we can definitely prevent that with physical activity and strength training. Okay, so other leg. Hips are stacked up, knees together, one leg out. If you're standing up, we're going to do the opposite leg. Get all that weight on the opposite leg. And we are going up, two, three, four. Lead with the heel, so slight with the heel. Make sure your feet are flat. Good. Hover that foot over the ground. Up for two, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Great. Up for three, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for four, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Good job. You should feel it in that hip. Up for five, 
down, two, three, four. Up for six, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for seven, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for eight. Down, two, three, four. If you're standing up, make sure your knee isn't locked. Up for nine, hold it up there. Down, two, three, four. Great, last one, up for 10. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Woo! Should feel that in your hips. Stretch it out a little bit. We're gonna do one more set. So all of these exercises that we're doing today, lasting six to eight seconds because we know that if we slow down and use that whole range of muscle and use the exertion and the, um, the both exertions of the muscle that we can strengthen them more efficiently. So if we're spending an hour strength training, you might as well do it the most efficient way to, to build muscle up. All right, ready for your second set. Ready or not, we're gonna do it. So feet are flat, knees together, and we're going up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Great, up for two, two. Think about that hip bone, down, two, three, four. Great, up for three. Hold it, down, two, three, four. Up for four, two, three. Four, down, two, three, four. Up for five, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Down, two, three, four. Up for seven. Down, two, three, four. Great, up for eight, two more. I meant three more. <laughs> Down, two, three, four, nine, two, three. You should really feel it now. Down, two, three, four. If you're not, you need more weights on your ankles. Up, hold it. Down nice and slow. Down, two, three, four. Woo, stretch out those hips. Nice job. The next one we're gonna do is a chest press. So we're gonna focus on our chest muscles. This one is a pretty strong muscle in our body, so I want you to grab your heavier, heaviest weights and you're laying on the ground. If you're standing up, you can do a wall push-up in which you will find some wall space to do so. <laughs> do we need weights if we're standing? No. So for a wall push-up, you're gonna find a wall, a nice sturdy wall. Um, you're gonna put your feet out. Your hands are gonna be right where your chest is gonna drop. So where your chest drops towards the wall and then you're gonna push back out. So you want your hands where your chest is gonna fall towards the wall. And you're gonna be doing the same count as we're doing on the floor. If you're on the floor, you have your knees up. Backs are nice and neutral position. You've got your hand bells or your hand weights out to the side, pretend you have a bar in your hand and you're pushing that bar up straight up from your chest. So not over your head, straight up from your chest. Okay, so you can get your elbows in a little bit more neutral position. You should be like in goal post position. So it should look like a goal post on the ground. And we're going up, two, three, four. Hold it up there and then down really slowly back into the goal post. Down, two, three, Four, perfect. Don't rest those elbows, just hover. Up for two, two, three, four. Down, two, three, hover, four. Great, up, two, three, four. Down, two, three, hover, right there. Yep, and then push back up, push up, up. Two, three, four. Down, two, three, Four, up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. 
two, three, four. Good, this is a chest muscle, so think about working that chest. And up for seven, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Push up for eight, good. If you're at the wall, your hand should be pretty low. Good, down, two, three, four. This is nine, two, three, four. Keep breathing, try not to hold your breath. Down, two, three, four. Last one, push it up for 10. Two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Good. So the muscle that we're strengthening is that chest muscle right here. So any pushing activity, some pulling activity. Um, if it, you want to advance this one, you can go up to 10, 15, 20 pounds doing this one, and then you would flip yourself over and do a modified push-up and then a regular push-up. But for now, we're just trying to kind of basically start out with that chest muscle. So they've done studies for strengthening. Um, so this is a randomized control study that's on the board right now that they did in 1994 with um, postmenopausal women. They had 20, about 20 that were sedentary, that didn't do anything, and they had 20 that were strength training. And the greatest benefit of it was that after four months, they had a lot more muscle mass, which you would expect if you exercised for four months twice a week. Their fat mass increased, or their muscle mass increased, which was really good. Um, their fat decreased, their balance improved, and their physical activity increased too. And the best thing about it, as we do our second set, get it ready for a second set, is that their um, bone mineral density actually improved. So the, the group that didn't do anything, their bone mineral density went down by 2%. This is postmenopause, which will happen. They've been pr you know, proven to do that. And the ones that were participated in strength training, even just after four months, their bone density either leveled off or got better. Okay, so 10 more. Goal post position. And we're going up. Two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Pretend there's a bar in your hand and you're pushing it straight up towards the ceiling. Yeah, get a little bit more relaxed. Down, two, three, four. Good, up for two. Three, four, down, two, three, four. Up for four, two, three, four, down, two, three, four. Up for five, two, three, four. Great, down, two, three, four. Up for six, two, three, four. Up for seven, two, three, four, down. Hover those arms right over the carpet. Try not to let them rest. Back up for eight, two, three, four. Nice and controlled, down, nice and slow. Good, up four, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, and 10. Last one, push it up, hold it up there. Down nice and slow. Think about that chest muscle and relax. Great, that was the second set of those. So now we are going to actually roll up your mats. We're gonna put your weights underneath the chair and we're gonna do some balance exercises. So part of this study that they did at Tufts University is that they had gr uh, mothers participating and they brought all their daughters in after the four weeks and they strength tested all the mothers and then all the daughters. And in every single case, in all 20 cases, the moms were stronger than the daughters after those four weeks of strength training. So age doesn't matter. We can build our strength at every age. The other thing is, is that diabetes, we know that 16 million Americans have prediabetes, 17 million have um, full-blown diabetes. We also know that diabetes is um, very, di type two diabetics are um, typically because of behaviors that we have or lifestyle that we have. Um, and we also know in the world of dietetics and public health that being pre-diabetic is kind of like being pre-pregnant. There's no such thing. You either are diabetic, you should be living like a diabetic and living, you know, to improve your diabetes even way before you get maybe even diagnosed with diabetes. 
So they also did some research around um, type 2 diabetes, and so we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Um, so the next one we're going to do is actually a tandem walk. And so this one's a balance exercise. So for safety, make sure everyone's weights are tucked in behind their chair. Um, and we're going to go. Um, if you have some balance issues or you're not feeling very um, good with your balance today, you can go against a wall. Um, but what we're going to do is try to have our eyes up, heels, toe, toe to heel, toe to heel. We're going to take about um, six or seven steps forward, and then I want you to turn around and go back to your chair, and I want you to do that twice. So everyone, eyes towards me, heel to toe, eyes up. Good. It's a focus exercise, too. Good. If you have, need to take a little stutter step in between, you can. Turn around. And again. So on the slide is a picture of Bernice, who's actually a strong women participant in Boston. And she has a uh, bowling ball. She's living independently. And she's living independently because she has you know, been very intentional about her strength training. We also know that many people live with arth arthritis and osteoarthritis, and that strength training improves arthritis and the symptoms of arthritis, so it doesn't need to be so debilitating. OK. Good. The next activity we're going to do is actually a balance activity. So it's going to be a wide or a stork. So if you've done yoga or any sort of balance activity, it's going to be a stork. Depending on your balance, you can. Um, we're going to try to do this one for two minutes. Typically, we're silent during this one, um, and we you know keep it silent so everyone can focus and focus on in on their balance. I'm going to probably chit chat during it while we're doing this, so there's not silence. Um, but you can just lift a leg up. We're going to do each leg once. So you can just lift one up. And if you're feeling like your balance is pretty good, you can you know, go up like this. So I am going to start the clock for two minutes. And if not, just hands above the chair, kind of hover with one foot elevated. Otherwise, we're up. Let's get started. So the picture on the right um, is actually Dr. Miriam Nelson. And Dr. Nelson has been, is the founder of the Strong Women program. She's the one who wrote the book, Strong Women Stay Young, Strong Women Stay Strong Bones. Um, she's written about seven or eight books um, from Tufts University. And that's her sister-in-law with rheumatoid arthritis, who was at one time bedbound and unable to you know, get up out of bed and move. And she was blessed enough to have Dr. Nelson as her sister-in-law. So they um, started exercising and strength training, you know, 10, 25 minutes at a time. Her goal was to um, climb the summit of Mount Washington. And as you can see, they are at the top of Mount Washington. She still has rheumatoid arthritis, but her symptoms are less, you know, dark into the valley. They ca she can kind of maintain and um, ward off some of those, those bad or worse days because of her strength training. This is halfway done. We have a minute left. This is a picture of one of the original strong women classes in, um, in a neighborhood in Boston. They were some of the original women who participated um, in the Boston area, right outside of Tufts. This is a woman who participated in strong women, and her great-granddaughter got her involved as a test subject. Um, she was one of those women. She actually has nine children and 21 grandchildren and a whole slew of great-grandchildren. And like many women, she took care of everyone else but didn't, wasn't really intentional about taking care of herself in that way. So after the study, she sent Dr. Nelson a picture of her in, Hawaii, her in Hawaii, where she was surfing, and said she would only surfing because she had the confidence um, to do so. She would have never done that without that class. And here's her parasailing, which is pretty awesome. So we also know that the, the age of, cha of um, we are done. <laughs> Switch legs. So again, one leg or up if you feel like your balance is good. We know the face of aging is changing. So you may not have seen your grandparents or great-grandparents riding a bike or swimming, um, but we know that that's changing. And we live a lot longer, and women are staying, and women and men are staying fit a lot longer. 
We also know that women are a little bit nervous about gaining muscle mass because they think they're going to be bigger. Um, so we need to make sure that we educate women that we are never going to look like this. It's not possible unless we take some drugs and spend hours and hours and hours at the gym. So um, as much as we strengthen our bus muscles, we, it's, you know, we don't get bigger. Um, our muscles get bigger, but we also get more fit. And so we actually not necessarily will change sizes. This is a picture of all the Strong Women classes currently. If you go to the Strong Women Wisconsin UW Extension website, you can click on a map that has all the current classes in it. The current classes, you can click on the star and you can find a class for anyone around the state who wants to participate in this program. One minute to go. There's a couple websites you can visit for more information. So there's the strongwomen.com, which is the Tufts University website, if you're interested in becoming a strong women leader. Wisconsin has four trainings a year to train leaders to go back into their communities or go back into their neighborhoods and teach this program. And if you're interested in the Strong Women Wisconsin website, it's fyi.uwex.edu slash strongwomen, <laughs> Wisconsin, as seen on the board. We have a couple more seconds left. If you feel your ankles shaking, this is a good thing. It's all your stabilizers muscles. As you get stronger, your balance gets better. So we know as we strengthen our legs and our, and our bodies and our core, our balance gets better too. And you're done. Okay, so the last thing we're going to do is stretch. So you made it through the program. Congratulations. First, we're going to take our arms, stretch it out. It's good to stretch after you exercise. You know, like you're pushing up against a wall, you should feel it in your upper back. Hold that stretch. And we're going to grab our hands behind us, like you're pushing up against a wall behind you. Stretch out that chest muscle. You can use the chair in front of you. We're going to stretch out our hamstrings. So either fingers to the floor or fingers on your chair. Hold that stretch for about 20 seconds. Then we're going to come up nice and slowly. Use a chair for balance. I want you to grab a pant leg or a foot. Or you can stand in front of your chair and put your leg on your chair. We're going to hold that. So try to get your knees together. Push down with this leg or tilt your pelvis and you'll really feel that stretch in your quadricep. Great. Very last stretch. Switch legs. Try to get those knees together. Push down with that knee towards the floor. Hold it. Awesome. Arms up, big breath in. And let it go. And congratulations. <laughs> we are done.